What is going on Hive Warriors? This is your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about the science of body fat. Stay tuned. What's going on everybody? So today let's talk about the actual science of body fat. How does it get stored into your body? What happens when you eat food? And how does that conversion happen inside your body? Plus, we're going to talk about where does it go when you burn it? When you're burning your body fat, where does your body fat go? Does it come out from your sweat glands? Does it just come out and radiate as heat waves off of your body? We're gonna tackle all of that with the science of body fat right now. When you actually consume food, your body goes into a conversion. It takes that food, breaks it down into glucose so that it can travel through your bloodstream. As the glucose travels through your bloodstream, it gets distributed into different locations. It gets distributed it into your muscle cells, it gets distributed into your brain cells, your heart cells, and it goes into all the parts that your body needs to keep you alive and to keep all of your systems running. Now, if there's an excess amount of glucose, then that will go into your fatty cells. An excess amount of glucose is, of course, an excess amount of calories. Now, think about your fatty cells as any other part of your body. You always have fat cells in your body. By determining how much storage is in that cell will determine how big it is in your body. So if you have a very low percent of body fat, that means your fat cell is very, very small. If you have a large body fat percentage, then that means your fat cells is very, very big. Think of your fat cell as a water balloon. It's always a water balloon, even though it's very very small the moment you put water in there it starts to expand that is your fat cell your fat cells are not actual body fat per se but it is the water balloon before you put the water in it so just know it will always be in your body even if you have zero percent body fat fat cells is the bucket that extra glucose extra calories gets distributed into now there's a process for it to actually come out of your body it takes some time you have to be at a deficit so that your fat cells determines that it needs to release some of that fat cell out of the body so that it can actually distribute it to the muscle cell the heart cell the brain cell and all these other locations that require actually utilizing that those calories to power those parts of your body. Now, why is an excess amount of fat cells very, very dangerous? Because of what it can do to your vital organs. The most dangerous being the visceral fat. And that visceral fat is the ones that are in your stomach. It's the most dangerous because in your stomach are where they're the most vital organs are coupled together. So as these fatty cells increase, it actually starts to seep out into those vital organs, clogging some important areas of travel between those organs, and it can be very, very dangerous, can be fatal, can cause type 2 diabetes, and it is something that you want to avoid. Visceral fat is the fat that you want to target the most, but the unfortunate part is you cannot fat target your body and usually the abdominal body fat the visceral body fat takes longer to come off of your body than say your face or your arms your insulin has to race up to open up the bloodstream to allow for the glucose to enter the bloodstream so that it can travel and bring it to the different locations as I mentioned earlier. Once that happens, the glucose goes directly into, into the different compartments and, and the excess goes into the fat cells. However, the insulin actually lingers up there. It doesn't it doesn't dissipate as quickly as the glucose does into all the different parts of your body. And one big flaw to this, although your body doesn't need your insulin to drop so that the glucose can go into your fat cells, your body does need the insulin to drop so that the calories can actually come out. That is why every time you eat, it makes it much, much harder for you to lose those calories from that storage area 
of the fat cells. How do you solve that? Of course, intermittent fasting. You don't eat for a long time, your insulin is down, and then those calories from the fat cell storage can easily come out. So then what happens to all the excess calories that are coming out of your fat cells? Where does it actually go? Well, there's a few places that it actually goes. Some of it gets converted into heat, and then that heat vaporizes. So yes, your body needs to stay at a temperature of about 98 degrees, so for it to do that, which is a hot number, just think about 98 degrees outside with the sun and how hot that feels, think of your body inside having to be 98 degrees. So for that to happen, a lot of things have to be burned and utilized almost as if it was coal so that it can keep the furnace going. Also, the body fat has a lot of water in it. It's made up of water as well. That gets released when you actually go to the bathroom and urinate. That excess water inside the fat cells can be released in that way too. Also, it actually turns into carbon dioxide. It moves from the bloodstream, turns into carbon dioxide, and then goes into your lungs, and then you breathe it out. You actually breathe out the fat that was in your body. So you want to utilize the best tools that you can to speed up the process, and that is, of course, intermittent fasting. As I mentioned, you don't want to keep your insulin high. You want to try to keep it low as much as possible. That is it guys, that is the science of body fat and that is also where your body fat goes when you burn it. I hope this was very informative for you and if you have any other questions to any other videos that I've had in the past, I will have one here and of course my subscribe button will be down here. Go ahead and click either one of those. I would gladly appreciate it and I will see you on Wednesday. Have a good one guys. Peace.